Deep within the rugged peaks of Italy's Gran Sasso Mountain in 1943, a daring mission unfolded as Otto Scorzani, once a mere civil engineer, now Hitler's chosen commando, led a covert operation unlike any other. Otto, also known as Scarface due to a unique facial wound he received from a fencing match, glided over the mountaintop with a small team of elite Waffen-SS troops and German paratroopers. With precision and stealth, they landed and readied their weapons after scanning the horizon. Their objective was the audacious rescue of Benito Mussolini from a heavily guarded mountain prison with a garrison of over 200 armed Italian soldiers. Squizzini knew he was outgunned and outnumbered, but he was the master of unconventional warfare and knew he could pull it off flawlessly. He turned to one of his men and ordered the team to split up while he approached the front door with an Italian officer ready for his ruse to unfold. Only Otto Scorzani, an engineer turned Hitler's favorite operator and the most wanted man in Europe for his numerous exploits, could save Benito Mussolini from peril. With no hesitation, Scarface knocked on the door. Otto Scorzani, born into a Viennese middle-class family in 1908, was steeped in military tradition with roots in Skorzenshin, Poland. Growing up amid the economic turmoil and the fall of the Austro-Hungarian Empire post-World War I, he lived modestly. His father's wisdom resonated deeply, advising him, quote, there's no harm in doing without things. It might even be good for you not to get used to a soft life. This ethos of resilience shaped Skorzeny, foreshadowing the stoic, formidable figure he would become during the global conflicts ahead. Otto attended the Technical University of Vienna, where he studied engineering and mastered languages beyond his native German, becoming fluent in French and English, showcasing an early aptitude for communication and diplomacy that would also come in handy for the Austrian in the years to come. Otto Skorzeny excelled academically and in academic fencing, earning him recognition across Germany and Austria. His prowess in 15 challenging duels left him with a Schmiesen, a dueling scar seen as a mark of honor and bravery. This scar, which he wore proudly, symbolized his courage and skill, earning him the nickname Scarface during World War II. Skorzeny once remarked, quote, Just as in dueling, you must fix your mind on striking at the enemy's head. So too in war. In May 1932, Otto Skorzeny joined the Austrian Nazi organization and the Stromabteilung, or SA, the party stormtroopers. His leadership quality is shown, contributing significantly to the success of the Anschluss, the annexation of Austria to the German Reich in March 1938. When Germany invaded Poland in September 1939, Skorzeny, then a civil engineer, applied to become a Luftwaffe pilot, but was rejected for being too tall and too old, at 1.94 meters, approximately 6 foot 4, and 31 years of age. Undeterred, he joined the Wehrmacht's elite Liebstandarte SS Adolf Hitler, ready for combat. During the summer of 1941, as Germany launched Operation Barbarossa, Skorzeny entered the fray with the SS Division des Reich, confronting the Red Army in the initial stage of the invasion. Due to his bravery in combat, Skorzeny was given command of a technical section during the Battle of Moscow in October 1941 to capture the NKVD headquarters and the Central Telegraph Office of the Soviet Union. The secondary objective was seizing control of the sluices of the Moscow-Volga Canal to flood Moscow, but the plan was abandoned as the Axis forces could not gain control of the capital. In January 1942, while engaged with the enemy in a vicious skirmish, Skorzeny was wounded by shrapnel that hit him in the back. The officer was immediately evacuated to the rear for treatment and awarded the Iron Cross second class for his outstanding bravery. While recovering, Skorzeny became interested in commando operations formulating and developing his concepts of unconventional warfare and guerrilla tactics behind enemy lines, such as using enemy uniforms for deception, sabotage attacks, and partisan-like fighting. These innovative tactics caught the attention of SS Brigadeführer Walter Schellenberg, head of the SS Foreign Intelligence Service, who named Otto the commander of the Waffen-Sonderverband ZVB Friedenthal, or SS Jagdverband 502, the ultimate SS combat unit of special operations. By April 1943, Skorzeny was already training more men in schools for special operations in sabotage, espionage, and paramilitary skills. Shortly after, Scarface and his elite Waffen-SS troops were dispatched for their first top-secret operation, Operation Francois, Germany's attempt to convince the dissident Qashqai people of Iran to sabotage Allied supply lines bound for the USSR. In July 1943, after the Allies took Sicily, a new Italian government, led by Marshal Pietro Badoglio, which had been secretly negotiating an armistice with the Allies. Benito Mussolini was imprisoned several times and constantly moved from one location to another to prevent his rescue by German forces. El Duce was ultimately held at the Hotel Campo Imperatore, 
a ski resort in the Apennine Mountains of central Italy. The Fuhrer, not wishing to leave his ally behind, ordered an immediate top-secret operation to rescue Mussolini. Scrozzini and Luftwaffe General Kurt Student, who was also a paratrooper, orchestrated an ambitious rescue operation. This mission involved elite paratroopers and Waffen SS troops, led by Scorzini himself. The green light was given on September 12, 1943. Scorzini and the rescue team used DFS-230 gliders carrying 10 men to land on the Gran Sasso Mountain near the hotel. The operation was complex due to the uneven and abrupt terrain, but the paratroopers made do and organized themselves before the attack. Before striking the hotel, a group of paratroopers seized the Campo Imperatore and cut the phone lines. Scorzini and his Special Forces unit swiftly overpowered over 200 well-armed Carabinieri Italian guards without firing a shot, thanks in part to the surprise and speed of their attack. Precisely 10 minutes after the raid began, Mussolini was found and extracted without harm. He was then flown out aboard a Fiesler Fi-156 STOL to Vienna and Germany to meet with Hitler. The success of Operation Oak proved to be one of the war's first and most dramatic Special Forces operations. It showcased Scorzini's audacity and the effectiveness of well-planned commando operations. Nonetheless, the rescue did little to alter the course of the war in Italy, as the Italian Social Republic held little real power and the Allies continued their advance to conquer all of Italy. Operation Oak solidified Otto Scorzini's reputation as one of the most capable and daring commandos of World War II, earning him an alleged spot for Operation Long Jump, the secret code for a mission destined to eliminate Winston Churchill, Franklin D. Roosevelt, and Joseph Stalin during the Tehran Conference of late 1943. Nevertheless, the operation was supposedly leaked by the Soviets and cancelled, with the German special operators airdropped over Iran turning tail before they were captured. Otto Skorzeny himself later denied involvement in any such operation during the post-war period. His denial, alongside the lack of corroborative evidence from German military archives, adds to the skepticism about the extent and reality of Operation Long Jump, which led historians to assume it was a plot fabricated by the Soviets to prove they had access to intelligence other Allied partners lacked. Skorzeny's next task came once again directly from the Führer in May 1944. His new operation, codenamed Unternehmen Russelsprung, or Night's Leap, aimed to capture Yugoslav partisan leader Josip Broz Tito, who had become a problem for the Axis forces trying to stabilize the Balkans. Capturing Tito was critical for destabilizing the partisans and reducing Allied influence in the region. Scorzini meticulously planned the mission, based on Wehrmacht intelligence that suggested Tito was headquartered in the town of Dvar in Bosnia. The plan involved a two-pronged attack, combining a paratrooper drop and a ground assault, with elements of the Brandenburgers, Waffen SS, and Luftwaffe Special Forces. On May 25th, the raid on Dvar began. Despite the element of surprise and the initial success in penetrating Dvar with the effective use of his small attacking force, Skorzeny's men failed to capture Tito. The guerrilla leader managed to escape from his headquarters mere minutes before the Teutons could secure it. What followed was a hasty retreat. Overrun and outnumbered, the German special operators received heavy casualties and a heavy blow to their morale. Nonetheless, Scarface's reputation remained intact, and Adolf Hitler again summoned the commando leader for another one-of-a-kind operation, kidnapping the son of the Regent of Hungary, Admiral Miklos Horthy. The man was secretly negotiating a surrender with the Red Army. German intelligence concluded that by capturing his son, Horthy would be forced to resign to form a new government aligned with the Axis powers. Thus, Operation Panzerfaust was launched in October 1944 with Scarface Scorzeny in command. While a million Germans were fighting in the region, Otto and his Waffen-SS unit infiltrated the capital, took Miklos Horthy Jr. as their captive, and ordered his father to renounce the government, ensuring Hungary's cooperation until April 1945. For this critical success, Otto ascended to Obersturmbaumführer, or Lieutenant Colonel. Scorzeny and his men's exploits quickly spread across the western and eastern fronts. Besides his unique ways of fighting and engaging the enemy, the Wehrmacht used his excellent English for a new and ambitious task. While the Führer planned the Ardennes Offensive of December 1944, Otto and his English-speaking commandos were tasked with preparing and executing Operation Greif. It involved using English-speaking German soldiers dressed in Allied uniforms and equipped with Allied weapons and vehicles. These soldiers were to infiltrate American lines to cause disruption and disarray. Scorzini handpicked over two dozen German soldiers dressed in American fatigues and driving American jeeps. Scarface was well aware that under the Hague Convention of 1907 guidelines, 
all of his men could be executed upon capture for employing enemy uniforms. While Scorzani prepared the operation, other men spread the rumor that he was also planning a raid on Paris to capture General Eisenhower. As a result, the American leader ordered an all-out manhunt for Scorzani. Soon, Scarface became the most wanted man in Europe, with wanted posters distributed across the continent. When the Battle of the Bulge began, Otto's men joined the fray, disguised as American soldiers, misdirecting traffic, altering road signs, cutting off communication lines, and spreading misinformation among the troops. Nevertheless, over 20 of his troops were caught and executed after they were stopped for inspection at a checkpoint and ordered to remove their GI clothes, revealing their German uniforms hidden underneath. Although successful at first, Greif failed, and Scorzani spent the rest of the war leading his SS commandos and paratroopers in desperate attempts to fend off the advancing Allied troops, such as the defense of the Schwedt bridgehead on the River Oder in February 1945. In late March, Hitler honored Scorzani by presenting him with the prestigious oak leaves to the Knight's Cross in recognition of his tireless efforts in defending the fatherland from the Allied troops breaching the heart of Germany. Following Germany's surrender, Scorzani was interred for two years and in 1947 was tried as a war criminal for violating the laws of war after ordering his men to dress as American soldiers during the Ardennes Offensive. Nonetheless, British SOE operators testified in his defense, arguing that both American and British troopers had also employed the same tactic during the war, dressing their men as German soldiers for secret operations. Scorzani was sent to a denazification camp at Darmstadt, but in a strange turn of events, the most wanted man in Europe escaped from prison with the help of Waffen-SS soldiers dressed as American military police. Shortly afterward, Scorzani made his way to Spain under the protection of Franco's government. Thus began a new life for him and his wife, setting up a small business and, from time to time, serving as a military advisor for Egypt, the CIA, and Argentina as an advisor for President Juan Perón. Although still debated to this day, Scorzani allegedly agreed to work for the Mossad during the 1960s if they removed him from Israel's hit list. The most wanted man in Europe died in July 1975 at the age of 67 from lung cancer. Scorzani's story, filled with constant danger, strategic brilliance, and bravery, continues to fascinate and instruct military history enthusiasts, a reminder of the thin line between conventional warfare and the underworld of espionage and secret operations.